juvenile sea squirt swims through the ocean looking for a convenient rock to latch onto and make its home. And when it finds a rock, it no longer needs its brain. So it eats it. And what this, what this illustrates is that most organisms on Earth really don't have brains because brains are incredibly energy hungry. The human brain, for instance, weighs about two to three percent of the mass of your body. And yet it uses something like 20 percent of the body's energy. So pound for pound, it's using about 10 times as much energy as any other piece of your body. So why do we have such a huge brain if, if brains are so energy hungry? Well, we shifted in our evolution to eating meat, which is a more concentrated source of energy, and that enabled the brain to grow. Um, another thing that actually happened is that we discovered fire and cooking. And when you cook food, you break down the proteins into their components. So you do some of the work of a stomach. And if you can do that, um, then, then you do not need a big stomach like the great apes have. So a frying pan is an external stomach in the same way that writing is an external memory. So dispensing with that need, you can have a bigger brain. But it turns out that our brains are actually smaller by about 10% than they were 15 to 30,000 years ago. So why is that? Well, it was a very tough world uh, at that time. And you basically had to do everything. You had to um, chase your food, hunt your food, kill it. And it was a very dangerous world. People were bigger as well. And when we look at the animal kingdom, it turns out that wherever an animal has been domesticated, it's smaller than its cousin. It has a smaller brain and it has a smaller body than its uh, cousin in the wild. So basically humans, by inventing civilization in which each individual is dependent on many others and doesn't actually do the hunting and all the functions that someone would have done 30,000 years ago, or humans have domesticated themselves. Ooh.